Hi there, I'm the Mechanic on Rope. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you're probably familiar with my aluminum air battery experiments. If that's you, welcome back. For those of you who are joining for the first time, thanks for coming by. In this video, I want to focus on a new electrolyte. My goal is going to be to increase the voltage of the individual cells. Now, the obvious choice for this would be either potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. After all, that's what's used in commercial versions of this battery. And I've had multiple comments asking for me to do this. So here it is. I opted to go with potassium hydroxide because from what I've read online, it seems to give the biggest power increase. Now I wanna say before going further, this is probably the most dangerous substance that I've worked with up till this point. So it certainly goes without saying, don't try this at home. And while you're busy not trying this at home, take a look down in my description and read my full disclaimer. Moving on, let's make this electrolyte. I'm just gonna get some water and add a splash of face melting crystals. And there you have it, one potassium hydroxide electrolyte. Okay, video's done. You can move on with life now. Maybe I should back up a bit. Yes, it is incredibly easy to make this. It's just like mixing salt water, only more dangerous. But there is a catch. This stuff will literally eat aluminum. This is about 250 milliliters worth of 10% potassium hydroxide solution. And in 10 minutes, it powered through this aluminum like it was nothing. What's more, see all those bubbles and wisps of fog? That's not inactive dry ice. In fact, that's the opposite. It's very reactive hydrogen. Both traits are a problem. And that's what I'm gonna spend the rest of the video trying to fix. After some digging online, I found some sources that said adding ethylene glycol helps. The reason being ethylene glycol is a hydrogen bond donor. So it helps in cleaning up all that excess hydrogen. Hmm, makes sense. Let's try that. Some of you may remember that I've worked with ethylene glycol previously when I was experimenting with deep detector solvents. I'll be referencing that video as well as a couple others later. So if you want a refresher or have never seen them before, click on the banner when they show up or check the description for some links. In that video, I used automotive coolant, which has ethylene glycol in it. Since then, I've been able to get some pure ethylene glycol from a local chemical supplier. I'm gonna test both of them to see what improvement they make. From trial and error, it seemed to me that a 50-50 mix of ethylene glycol and potassium hydroxide solution has the best effect. For the automotive coolant, I know that it is already diluted with water, so I mix the potassium hydroxide in with it directly to form a 10% solution by weight. Here's the results. It's so cool, it's actually working. There's still bubbles, but it's a smaller amount and the aluminum lasts about twice as long before being dissolved. It looks like the pure ethylene glycol performed better than the coolant, but I guess that makes sense as the actual concentration of ethylene glycol in the coolant is unknown. Maybe I could tweak the concentration of potassium hydroxide in the solution, but either way, I think we have our answer. This approach certainly works. Well, let's hold up for a minute. I wanna take this a step further. Why not use my deputectic solvent that I made previously? It uses ethylene glycol and choline chloride. My theory is, is that that would be better for the battery because then the ethylene glycol isn't just dead weight. I wonder if the battery will perform any better. So I'll whip up a deputectic solvent using the same process covered in my previous video.
And here it is. Let's see what happens when I mix the potassium hydroxide solution. Well, it hasn't exploded, so that's a good sign. I did notice that after the solution had settled for a while, some cloudy precipitate had formed and was suspended in the fluid. I don't know if that's really obvious with the video here, but uh, if any of you had any ideas as to what that was, it'd be awesome to hear from you. Let's see how the aluminum does. Outstanding, look at that. There's no bubbles at all. And after 10 minutes, it's still completely intact. Well, I think we're ready for some tests. I'll check each solution's influence on voltage and amperage draw in the battery chemistry. I'm gonna start off small, using only a two inch square of aluminum and a one inch square of graphite sheet. So for voltage first, here's all of the solution variants, as well as the original potassium hydroxide solution as a control. As you can see, they are all approximately about the same at 1.4 volts with the coolant based solution performing the lowest at 1.2 volts. For amperage, I performed two tests, one with a one kilo ohm load and another one with no load. For the load, they all surprisingly performed very similarly, probably because they all have the same voltage potential and can only move so much current through the load as a result. With the load removed, the results varied a bit more. They all start with a surge and settle out after a couple seconds. Unfortunately, the best performer in this category is the original solution coming in at 0.06 of an amp during its surge before coming down to 0.03 of an amp. The worst one was the deputectic solvent potassium hydroxide combo. It was only slightly better than its load test, coming in at 1.4 to 0.8 milliamps. With the information from these tests, I decided to do one full-scale test using my 3D printed battery housing from my last video. Q banner for those interested. I'll use my Deputechnic solvent potassium hydroxide solution because it produces the least amount of hydrogen. This is a flooded cell design, so all that bubbling can cause the cell to overflow. But first, it needed a clean. If you're wondering, this is what multiple uses and sitting for six months does. I replaced the graphite and copper tape as well as gave it a wash to remove the chemical stains. Here it is, good as new. Now let's see what happens when we put the electrolyte in. All is calm for now. Voltage and amperage readings are the same as the original test, with the exception being the unloaded amperage test is now higher at 0.02 to 0.03 amps. Let's see what happens when I put some voltage to it. I'll use my charger here again from a previous video. As a side note, I know that some of you have suggested some inexpensive chargers with variable voltage supplies. A better charger is on the list, but it hasn't happened yet. So I'll be working with this for now. As expected, some bubbles are starting to form. I only let it go for about 30 seconds before the bubbling was starting to get too much, but even with that, it bumped all my readings a bit. Most notably, the unloaded amperage climbed as high as 0.09 amps. After charging, minor bubbling continued. I'm not sure why this is. Maybe it's a delayed effect with the potassium hydroxide. I attempted to test the longevity of the cell, but was somewhat unsuccessful. I left the battery overnight with a one kilo ohm load. When I checked it the next day, I had a bit of a surprise. My cell had sprung a leak and the copper tape had become disconnected. It didn't just charge all night, but I'd say at least it was for a couple hours. I think it's the electrolyte's fault because when I tried to take the aluminum out, the bracket had become brittle and broke off in my hand. Seems like something in there doesn't like PLA or adhesive. It looks like, however, the battery has more juice in it. 
The voltage is still at 1.2 volts, the amperage under load is still 1.1 milliamps, and the unloaded amperage is still 0.03 amps. The electrolyte has changed to a white color, and the aluminum is still intact. You can see corrosion, but it's not completely dissolved like the original one. And this is over 12 hours later. With the cell damage though, I think I'll call it quits for now. Even with the challenges of the final test, I'd say overall this experiment has been a success. My cell voltage has certainly been boosted, and I've been able to establish a method of controlling the hydrogen evolution and aluminum decomposition. If you enjoyed this video, or have something you want to add, feel free to leave a like or a comment, or even both. You can also support me in the videos I make by following the link in the description and buying me a coffee. That's all I got for today. Until next time, MGR signing out.